And that's because really these tools showed up over the weekend and I was just so excited. I wanted to open them up right away, but I didn't want to miss out on a chance to hang out with you guys through a live unboxing video. So this was really the first chance that I got. And so my wife, Mrs. Guns, is moderating the comments. So feel free to say hi to her. And basically what we have here is a 13 inch thickness planer. So it's the slightly wider than the standard 12 and a half inch thickness planer, as well as a six inch uh, joiner. And so I'm very excited for these because they come in at about half the price of most brands. And um, I've never heard of this brand before, Viver. I know somebody mentioned in the, the comments before this stream started that they've been seeing a lot of ads from Viver. So um, I'm, I'm really curious. And it seems like maybe you guys are curious too. So uh, basically, uh, those of you who are here in the comments, uh, feel free to go ahead and weigh in a vote. Which one do you want to unbox first? We have, like I said, the 13 inch thickness planer as well as the six inch joiner. And while you guys decide which one we're going to open up first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I decided to work with Beaver. And that's because uh, I could get tools from um, like other manufacturers, like, uh, I don't know, Porter Cable or DeWalt, uh, Black & Decker, whatever. Um, they've reached out to me before. The reason why I haven't is because they're all kind of the same price. Uh, most of them come in at about, I don't know, four or $500 for a thickness planer and around like three to $400 for a uh, joiner. And so I, you guys know that I uh, love value brands and I'm trying to figure out how to build like a professional workshop without like completely going broke. Um, but I'm very excited for these tools because I wanted to have a thickness planer and a joiner for a really long time. They're gonna be really handy. I know they will. Um, and so I've been trying really hard to work with Wen. I'm sure you guys have heard of that brand. Uh, I have one of their tools. They're really making a name for themselves for being a budget-friendly brand that makes somewhat quality tools. Um, Beaver actually beats Wen on price by a few dollars. So uh, this thickness planer, I believe, goes for, uh, what is it, $2.69, I believe. I can't remember now if it's $2.69 or $3.69. <laughs> That's really embarrassing. Um, anyway, definitely a lot cheaper than your four or $500, you know, rigid or DeWalt thickness planers that you get from Home Depot. And then the joiner, I think comes in, I want to say at about 160 or $170, which again, it's about half the price, um, of a rigid or DeWalt joiner, which would run you about $400, three to $400. So, uh, the reason why I titled it two for the price of one is because, you know, these two tools together add up to like just over 500 bucks. And, um, you know, that's pretty much the cost of a single thickness planer. So anyway, without further ado, I want to get to opening these things because if we have opportunity, I want to try them out. Um, and uh, there might be some assembly required. I have no idea. So, Dave. Yes. Okay. So well, quick reminder. Mrs. Guns is moderating the comments, so know that uh, you guys will get put in timeout if uh, you guys post anything crude or mean um, or uh, not family friendly, I guess. So let's keep the live chat uh, really family friendly, and uh, that way you don't get put in timeout or uh, kicked out of the live stream altogether. So um, with that being said, babe, what is the general consensus? Uh, cons consensus. consensus. <laughs> Do we want the uh, the planer or the joiner first? I had one vote for planer, one vote for joiner. Wow, not a whole lot of people here in the stream. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the planer first just because I'm most excited about it. And my guess is that if assembly is required, that the planer will have less assembly. But that is not a very educated guess. I've never put together a planer before. So let's go ahead and pull this thing open. Protectors. We got some styrofoam. Looks 
Looks like I opened it up right side up because we got our user manual. And I can't tell if this is right side up or not, actually. It looks like it might be upside down. <laughs> now that I say that out loud. All right. I was going to tell you that there's 40 in the chat. There's 40 in the chat? Oh, surprisingly good turnout for this late in the evening. Nobody's talking. Just nobody's talking. <laughs> Everyone just wants. Someone just wants me to unbox the dang thing. All right. I'm also really excited, you guys. I'm trying to get some live stream equipment. Oh, that is going to help me do a better job at doing um, gear reviews and product demos, and will allow me to. I totally unbox this upside down. So I did have it right side up. Dang it. <laughs> Um, anyway, it's going to allow me to hook up my professional camera microphone so we won't have this terrible sounding lapel mic. And also, it'll allow me to hook up a second mic for my beautiful wife. You guys can hear her better because some of you guys have mentioned that you want to hear her voice a little better. This thing is not light. Here's some loose parts in there. Well, this thing's legit. Look at that. Outboard ramps. Thank you, baby. Is it pointed a little too high? Yeah. Really nice. Cool. All right. So, guide crank. We got some styrofoam crammed in here. Protective film. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to take off or leave on. All right, so. Max planing depth. So there's three different speeds on this, it looks like. There is. Yeah. One, two, or maybe two different speeds. I thought there was three different speeds, maybe just two different speeds. All right. And I'm just going to double check the instructions if there's anything that I need to install. It looks like the crank for adjusting the height would probably be it, I'm guessing. These are Phillips. Spin both sides, cool. I don't know if that's in over there. Good enough for now. All right. See some other stuff that may. These. Oh, I bet these are feet that go on the bottom. And the others are just wrenches for making adjustments, I'm sure. Here, I'll put those feet on. Oh my gosh, this is heavy. These pieces of those pop in. Cool. Not speed, it's depth cut. Um, Time. I think that I'm pretty sure there's two different speeds. So somebody said it's not speed, it's, it's depth of cut. cut. Um, so the depth of cut is definitely. Well, no, this would be the thickness of material. Let's, uh, let's, that could be correct. We could be correct. It could be the depth of cut of the two, two different settings. Let's just have a quick look. I don't have to spend too much time reading the manual, but I just want to make sure I don't break everything. Can you get a full size body blank in it? A full size body blank. Um, with the 13 inch planer, from what I've heard, you can fit some full size guitar bodies in it. Um, Telecasters for sure. I think Stratocasters as well. Most most Fender, um, maybe 
I think a Jazz Master is a 13 and a half, but you might be able to run it through angled. Um, and then there, there are some other, I think an SG fits in the 13 inch. So there are some guitar designs that fit in the 13 inch um, thing, but this will be mostly used for uh, two pieces that will be joined together and I'll hopefully also be using the joiner to join them together. Um, and then depending on which one works better or faster or more productive or leaves a smoother finish, um, fretboard blanks are kind of the biggest reason why I want one of these. Um, in fact, I resawed a really nice uh, slab of maple that I want to turn into fretboards. And if, if we can get this thing going, then I really want to try running them through, see how they come out. Okay, depth of the planer, rotate the depth adjustment handle F, speed controller P. Yeah, so this is a speed controller, is what it says. Please plane the wood a few times that can be measured. The wood is completely horizontal. Wood width range adjusted depth of the one time plane. First, the thickness of the wooden plane. Yeah, so it yeah, so this is just speed, and then you control the depth with this. And so there should be a little gauge somewhere that tells me what depth. Oh yeah, right there in the front. Tells me what depth I'm at. So you measure your wood, and you know, let's say, you know, if I'm going to do a fretboard blank, we're talking probably uh, maybe eight millimeters. If I want to take two millimeters off, I would just set this thing to six millimeters. So, right now. Uh, I can see how my workbench has seen better days. <laughs> This is the same key to workbench that I've been using since I hit the road in my RV. Now, this is the most exciting live stream. Watch me just crank this thing down. Now, why don't we uh, plug it in and power it on? Hey, babe, I'm going to ask you to turn the heater down to the first setting. I have a single 20 amp circuit in this garage that runs everything, so. With the space heater on, <coughs> I'm prone to tripping this out. Let's see here. So, I'm not turning for anything. Yeah. yeah, what's Sean saying? He said it may say that, but it's not. I have the same one. Just download it, turn it on, you'll see. You make the cut finer. Make the cut finer. Okay. <laughs> It does sound like there's a difference in RPM. So I'm not gonna, I'm not saying that you're not correct. I'm just saying there's a difference in the sound. All right, let's use this to cover my base lamp that's sitting right behind it so it doesn't get covered in sawdust. And then I also, to make sure that my bandsaw was set up properly, ran a few pieces of pine through. So this will be a good, what kind of cutting heads does it have? Multi blade, spherical, etc. Supposedly, um, it ha it has three blades, whatever that means, and um. I know that the DeWalt, the expensive DeWalt one has three blades. The one that costs like seven hundred and fifty dollars. It's supposed to it's supposed to help with speed and like overall like better finish with cutting. But I don't, I don't, honestly don't know enough about these planers to really know what the difference is going to be. So anyway, hopefully I'm doing this correctly. But I think I just feed it through here like this. Let's try it. Just like that, didn't even touch it. So, make sure we're going to 
go down another millimeter. Okay, whoops. So that's, uh, we're at 10 millimeters there. <laughs> So already you can see that that did quite a good job. I don't know. I mean, look in the decontamination. So you can see the bottom half perfectly smooth. Looks really good. I'm behind the camera, so you can't hear what I'm saying. The bottom half looks really good. The top half still a little bit rough. Um, has to do probably, I'm sure, with how well I resawed it. So let's go ahead and go down a little bit more. <clears throat> Two passes and it's perfectly, I wouldn't say perfectly smooth. You can't get perfectly smooth with a planer. You need a thickness sander for that, but that is darn smooth. That is wonderful. Smoother than the other side that was already finished. All right, let's try this one. Let's bring it back up. <clears throat> See how this fits. <laughs> That time I went all the way the full depth of the gouges in one pass. Great. That's wonderful. All right. Um, how are we doing on time, neighbors? Oh, you're at 18 minutes in. 18 minutes? John says you need to do smaller turns. Smaller turns. Four okay. Turns, no more than half. Oh, okay. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate the tip, man. Um, I really want to try one of these fretboard blades and then we'll unbox and go down if we have time. Are you having fun, Dan? DJ Play Nice wants to know. Who, who asked? DJ Play Nice. DJ Play Nice wants to know if I'm having fun. Well, can you tell? <laughs> I've never used one of these before. Also, want to know if I'm doing this right. I'm just supposed to shove it in here, right? Um, because it seems like it seems like it takes some some doing to get it to shove in there. <clears throat>
Sorry. I know. So what are the tips? First of all, Mark says join it first. Okay. Okay. Second of all, uh, Scarborough Guitar said it's too low if you got to shove it in. Okay. Uh, he said, see if it slows it down because if it does, mine's broken. LOL. And then he said, move the red wood around to spare the blade. Move the wood. Oh, so I don't run in the same spot every time. Yeah. Got it. You'll okay. You'll want to rotate where you see it into the plane. If you keep you in the middle, you'll wear the blade out in the middle. Makes sense. Makes sense. Good tips. Okay. So I'm not supposed to just keep running it through the middle as I have been. So I'm going to run it through the sides. I've been trying to dodge my camera gear here a little bit. Set it up a little bit too close is the problem. So. I just didn't, ex I don't expect to run it for a very long period of time. Do you think it'll work? All right. I think one more pass, we're probably good. Yeah. No, I know. I yeah, I know. Firstly, where were you at the beginning of the stream when I asked which one I should open first? This was because <laughs> they did nothing. No, you weren't supposed to turn them on. They're just they're. They should have done something. They do nothing. Okay. Well, <laughs> turning them on just turns on the Bluetooth on them. Okay. Anyway, let's look at that. Can you see the figuring in that? Nice and smooth. Okay, I am very excited about this thing. Let's go ahead and set it aside and open up the joiner. I don't know if we'll have a chance to actually run the joiner, um, but on my other neck blank, I'll be sure to run the joiner first. Um, I honestly thought there was going to be some assembly required, so I didn't think I was going to get to actually try this out. So I'm actually very stoked that I got to try it out. And uh, it's, uh, well, the back loading gate doesn't fold up. Well, the loading gates don't fold up when you have it all the way slammed down low like this. But I don't want to crank it back up because I'm going to be using it for fretboards before anything else. So might as well just leave it there. Um, so move the joiner over here. Grief that is not light. Nice. Hamster cage wood chips here. 
sure that'll compost nicely once we start doing that stuff at our new house. When someone asks us to finish, you can guarantee. I couldn't ask you any of these things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Going to town. I know, well, because I was excited. Huh? <laughs> um, it, the, the lowest setting on the gauge is six millimeters, but I mean, I could see if it'll go down lower than that. It will not. Six millimeters is the lowest it'll go. So that's just above a quarter of an inch. So if you're doing what I did, and so I took a three quarter inch slab of maple that I got from Home Depot and I resawed it. And so that would in theory leave you with two three eighths inch pieces that set for the curve of the saw blade, uh, which takes off about an eighth of an inch. So that left me with uh, three, two three sixteenths pieces. And I probably took off about a sixteenth of an inch, which pretty much took care of, of any saw blade marks. And so that's about perfect. Um, I don't think you really want to go see five millimeters is about a quarter of an inch. And they, I don't think they sell fretboards thinner than a quarter of an inch. So you wouldn't want to go thinner than that anyway. All right. This one sounds like it's going to have some assembly required. Good, glad I opened the printer first. All right, comes with cool little push handle deals. Let's see if I can get the other one out. For grabbing down on your wood and pushing it through. Just realized that last comment kind of sounded a little dirty. Be careful. You know what that sounds good. I'll go back and edit it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Keep it clean and family friendly. I know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. All right. Ooh. So the reviews for the thickness planer were over, overall really positive, except for people didn't know where to get replacement blades for it. Um, and that's the only, pretty much the only negative criticism that it got, which um, a planer that inexpensive definitely does not use proprietary blades. So it's just a matter of figuring out what other brand replacement blades are going to fit, is my suspicion. Yes. The washer that fell out. I'm guessing it fell out of here. Um, the joiner, on the other hand, has some negative criticism for the fit and finish for the loading stuff. People say it's really uneven, and I would say that there's, I mean, there's some stains on it from like the machine oil, but yeah, there's a few little nicks and dents and stuff, but I don't know. We're talking about something that literally costs half the price of all the others. So how picky do you want to be? Um, if this is something that I could just hit with my orbital sander to smooth out, I can live with it, you know, if that's the only, only bad thing about it. I am nervous that I found a washer sitting loose. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was left there from my cleaner either. There's this as well. This must be, I think, so this is the fence, I would bet. Dust collection. Turn around so you guys can see. This, I'm guessing, is the safety guard. I'm not sure how it works, but I'm guessing it's something like Something like this where it lifts as you push the wood through. That's my guess. I don't see. Oh, I do see how to install the fence. I bet it's like this. I bet it's something like that. And then you can maybe like this. 
I have no idea. <laughs> How are we doing on time, babe? Uh, 9.31. 9.31? Oh, that's what time it is. Okay. I thought you were going to tell me how many minutes I had left. Oh. I was like, no way we have nine minutes left. Okay, so we're a minute over on our 30-minute time limit, which is normal. And I'm definitely going to have to read the instructions to figure out how to use the fence as well as the uh, safety loading gate thingy. Yeah, so my suspicions are correct. That is how more or less it goes, it gets connected. So it does get connected something like this, and this does get connected somehow in here like this. So I will put this together off camera, and if these tools are good, you're gonna see them, you're gonna see them a lot more in my guitar building videos, because I'm very excited. These are gonna speed up my workflows quite a bit. As you guys know, you don't need tools like these to build guitars, but if you're like me and you're kind of trying to level up your guitar manufacturing, like you want to build more than one guitar once in a while, and me, I'm trying to start a guitar building business, and so these are the kinds of tools that you should probably think about getting to really speed up your workflows because time is money. When you're, when you're building guitars to sell and make money, you know, your time is worth it. So thanks for joining me, you guys. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's take three last questions if anybody has them. How about that? Have you seen any questions? I do appreciate whoever it was that was telling me that I need to join my pieces before running them through the thickness planer. And that's actually something that I know. And so I didn't mean to write you off if that was you. Um, I do know that. I just didn't obviously have this thing out and set up. And I was really excited to try it. So um, I'm not too concerned. This piece of wood is, is flat enough that as long as whatever I'm gluing it to is flat, it's going to sit perfectly fine. And uh, honestly, what I should do is glue it to my blank before I run it through the planer anyway. So um, Mark, right? there's Mark. So thank you, Mark, for your feedback. I appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, next time I'll be sure to run it across the joiner because it's not perfectly flat. There's a little bit of the same thing when we got both of the Oh, really? <laughs> Got excited and opened the planer first. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it. I was definitely, I mean, that's exactly, nobody told me which one to open first, so that's why I opened that one. And I'm glad that I did because there's no assembly required and we can actually test it out. Were there any other questions, babe? Uh, no. I'm going to give you one more chance to ask a question. In the meantime, I'm going to show you my sweet thrift store score of the day. Check out this sweet corded drill I got had to have been made in like the 50s or 60s. It's all steel, it's like super heavy, and it was $2. And this is gonna be my cement mixing drill because uh, we're pretty close to moving into our new property and we're gonna be doing some landscaping and I'm gonna need to mix up some buckets of cement. And I'm pretty sure I wrecked my last cordless drill mixing cement and I don't wanna wreck my current ones because I really, really like my Makitas, they're really nice. And so $2. This thing I can wreck all day, no problem. All right, do I have a question? How much were the prices? I got here late. So. Okay, so the price is, and maybe, maybe you can double check, but I think it's, I know this one is 170, I think. Just open up a browser window and look at Amazon real quick. I think that one is three something. I, I would pull out my phone real quick. You have a phone, baby. <laughs> my phone is live streaming even know right what now. I'm looking at. Just look up Beaver uh, Thickness Planer, 13 inch. Put me on the spot. Um, I I can't remember. I want to say it's three thirty nine. Beaver thirteen inch planer. Okay, it's okay. I'm doing so. This one I know for sure is only like one hundred and sixty or one hundred seventy bucks. So I'm very uh, excited to see how this one goes because it's literally like half the price of if I were to walk into three fifty nine for the thirteen inch one. Thickness planer. Was thirteen inch? Just say thirteen inch. Uh, yes. 13 inch. It's three what? 59? Okay, so sorry, I misspoke earlier. I thought it was 339, it's 359, uh, which is still, I think, $20 cheaper than when, which was the cheapest one when I last looked. Um, but I think the uh, the DeWalt, the one that everyone buys, I think starts at $500 and then they have a $750 one that I think is the 13 inch planer with the three blades, which is what that is. And so if we're looking at comparable based on specs, that's like half the price of the DeWalt. Um, 
but yeah, so that's why I said in the live stream two for the price of one because these two added up together still cost less than just buying one name brand pickup kit. One ninety eight awesome. for the joiner. One ninety eight for the joiner. I think it's one seventy eight. Let's just see if they have put in the phone. I'm pretty sure it's one seventy eight. I could be wrong. What is it, Beaver? What? Beaver six inch thick uh, joiner. Six inch. Yep. Joiner. Jointer. G O. I N T E R. One ninety eight. One ninety eight. Oh, I checked these prices like when they sent them to me a few days ago. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they're both cheaper. I wonder if they jacked up the prices because they knew that I was going to be coming over. That would be really bummer. Hopefully that's not the case. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's not the case. All right. Thank you guys for joining. And uh, yeah, if these are good, you guys will see them in videos. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.